The Chaser's War on Everything is rated M for a mature audience. It contains sex references and other material which may offend some viewers. Pull off the couch, get comfy. Welcome to the war for another week. And Chris, look, the best news I've heard all year. Paris Hilton's finally in jail. Absolutely. The slapper is in the slammer. Put away for driving offences. And, of course, uh, back home here. Funnily enough, it looks like Channel 7's news boss, Peter Meekin, could also be locked up for driving offences. And, gee, Rui, I reckon it's a pity they can't share, share a cell together. Because, mm -hmm. I mean... Paris is just Meekin's type. Exactly. She's a dumb bimbo airhead. He would sign her up to host today tonight in no time. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Did you see also um, uh, John Howard was very much in election mode at his party's big federal council meeting on the weekend. Yeah, and a couple of people are saying that Howard's looking tired and out of ideas. I mean, this was Howard's election pitch back in 2004. This election, ladies and gentlemen, will be about trust. Who do you trust? Who do you trust? Who do you trust? <laughs> Now, here he is last weekend. He's a completely new man. The question I pose to the Australian people quite directly is this. Who do you trust? <laughs> Who do you trust? What a reinvention. It's so good. So he's done there. He's a new man. He's, he's a, a vision. genius. Did you see he's also tightened up our immigration laws too this week? So you're not allowed into our country now if you've got leprosy or HIV which means Australia is now officially harder to get into than that gay pub in Melbourne. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the Peel Hotel in Collingwood. Look, it's been a big scandal. This is the pub that has banned heterosexuals and apparently they enforce it pretty hard. Oh, well, they police it very strongly, I've heard. The, uh, the doorman there have an incredible gaydar, mm. which makes them very useful when it comes to settling debates about people's sexuality. Exactly. I mean, if you can get into the Peel, then you must be gay. So what better place to get a definitive ruling on someone whose sexuality <laughs> has been controversial for many years? Oh, but it's the pepper one. The pepper one's gay. Oh, oh, oh. What's your gay say? Okay. Oh, there's the proof. Tinky Winky's a homo. Case closed. Exactly. That, that is big news. And you know where that would be big news is in Poland. Because they, they've been in a lather recently about Tinky Winky. They, they were thinking he's corrupting young children. They were going to actually ban him. I know. I've never really thought of Poland as homophobic, except for the former Pope, of course. Mm. But <laughs> to test Poland's homophobia, I think, Craig, it's time we paid another visit to our old friends at the Polish club. Just for old times' <laughs> sake, people. I mean, come on. They were quite cool about Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Let's see how they go with a homosexual purple blob. Polish club! Yay! I want to plant big poles. Hello! Hi! Hello? How are you? Can I have a cock sucking cowboy? Hello, everybody. Hello. Sorry, mate. What else do you want? Hello, guys. Come on, give me a hug. No, I don't touch women. Hello, big poles. Yes, thank you. 
I'd just like to ask you ten questions, Sophia. Ten. Ten questions. Sophia, oh, first, uh, you've been described as Italy's answer to Rowena Wallace. Is that fair? <laughs> to what? Second, to, to, to... you're an actress from the Mediterranean. No, 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 so no. why have you never worked with Nick Giannopoulos no, speak before? Slowly. What no, speak slowly. Don't, don't interrupt. I haven't finished. Third, uh, do you think your topless scenes in Two Nights with Cleopatra are to blame for global warming? Fourth, is there any truth to rumours you failed the screen test for the role of Frodo Baggins? Or if some say you had a fling with Cary Grant, would you consider one with George Negus? Six, be honest. Um, is that you doing the voice of Cartman in South Park? <laughs> Seven, it looks like you're trying to write a letter. Would you like some help? Eight, uh, would you be my new girlfriend? The Veronicas are starting to annoy me. Uh, nine, who let the dogs out? Roof, roof, roof. And tenth, this is something that we all secretly wonder. As the world's most refined actress, do you ever fart? <laughs> Out the door. Yeah, okay, this oh. work. Excuse me. Oh my God, how <laughs> terrible person he was. And in that film, you were directed by. Silly, silly, silly. Well, it seems that these days everyone's coming up with their own plans to combat climate change. Uh, first George Bush came up with a new one last week. Uh, it's a two step plan one, drill more oil, then retire. Yeah, and uh, this week China came up with their own plan and didn't that raise a few eyebrows? Well, not really. Yeah, didn't you watch the news on Monday night? It raised heaps of eyebrows. The Chinese government stressed today that developing countries like itself should not have the same energy restrictions as developed countries. In fact, China has called for the first world to shoulder even more of the burden on climate change, especially when it comes to the distribution of high-tech green energy equipment. Mm. Um, then on the weekend, John Howard revealed his own climate change plan. Yeah, now his plan involves setting no greenhouse targets. In fact, the only environmental target he set is this one. No. He doesn't like Garrett's plan at all, does no, he? No. Well, I reckon they both need to do is have a look at my plan. Ah, the Lichardello plan. That's right, yeah. because there's one obvious producer of carbon dioxide that no one is talking about. And it's about time someone did something about it. Did you know what the greatest cause of global warming in the world is? Um, assuming pollution emissions. Yeah, us breathing out. Right. That's why we've invented environmental breathing. Oh. Do you realise that if you breathe mm -hmm. as little as zero times per minute, you would create 2,000 trees a year, in effect? Oh, really? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> we'll just get you to try some environmental breathing. Breathe in. Go. <laughs> That's 20 seconds. Can you feel the effect you're having on your environment? Yeah. It's amazing. It's so simple. Just keep it in. Can you feel the difference you're making to the environment at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. A bit longer. No, hold in. You're doing really well. A minute ten. You feeling good? Yeah. Okay, do you think you can do that for the rest of your life? Well, I wouldn't do it every day, no. Holding your breath isn't for you. Look air restriction units. All you do is simply put this air restriction tube over your head and it automatically stops the carbon dioxide being released into the air. You just let it sit like that. This actually purifies the air while you're breathing it. Can you tell? It's a lot clearer. Yeah. It's making me a little bit dizzy. It's a, it's a rush of adrenaline because you're helping save the environment. Are you feeling that rush? Yeah, I am a bit. Yeah, it's a good feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, well, let me try something that you might like a bit more then. We've got what we call here an air processing system. Hmm. This new technology actually turns the carbon dioxide you breathe out into oxygen. Isn't that amazing? No, it sounds amazing. It's very inconvenient. Sorry. Why do you say that for? Because I have a tree in my face. This doesn't work for you. The ultimate solution for this. How's that working for you? It's a little bit uncomfortable, I would say. Next week on ABC, it's finally the men's turn to talk about their favourite reading material on the first Tuesday Porno Club. And our first magazine this week is Teen XXX. From the latest contemporary stick mags... What did you think, Jason? I was very disappointed. The tit shots in the March edition were much, much better. ...to one of the all-time black label classics. Oh, to be frank, I had a lot of trouble masturbating to this. Oh, no, I disagree with that. I actually rubbed myself raw. Make a date with the first Tuesday Porno Club. Club. 10 o'clock next week on ABC. Do you like a shaved minge?
Hello, madam. How are you? Just need to have a look at that T-shirt there. What does it say? To be or not to be a... Well, why are you wearing jokes on T-shirts? Are you serious? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I'm, I yeah. didn't mean to be offensive. Okay. All right, well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just doing my job, madam. That is a wacky comedy T-shirt. Do you think that's funny? <laughs> Luck of the Irish just ran out. One hundred dollars. Talk ship, show me the code. What does that mean? Uh, it's like a geek stuff. Do you think that's funny? If you're a geek, yeah. If you're a number of people, probably not. Is this some sort of joke? I ain't, no, it's serious. Your mum can smash anyone? Yeah. Well, where is she? Because I'll take her. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can smash me. Yeah. You're trying to be funny, aren't you? No. You are? No. Sorry, mate, that's a wacky comedy T-shirt. Yeah. $150 fine. Your mum will smash you when you get that. No, it's not a job. I just like it. Well, I like giving fines, too, so you've just got one. I can't accept that. It's not a matter of accepting it. I'm the citizen's infringement officer. I have the authority to do this. What's this? This too. No, no, no. T-shirt? Minimalism. Boring and pretentious T-shirt. I paid a lot of money for this. Well, you're paying a bit more now. Hundred bucks. Cap. I'm gonna have to ask you to remove the shirt, sir. Mate, I can't. Can't remove the shirt? Why not? I like the shirt. You can keep the shirt. Yeah. I'm just saying you can't wear it in this area. Okay. All right? Can you please remove it? All right. Take it off now. Yes, thank you. All right. All right. Thanks, okay. There you go. A lot of Australian TV shows are starting to make a real splash overseas. And uh, there's, there's talk of this US version of Kath and Kim, for instance. That's right, and the, uh, the Channel 10 show, thank God you're here, has been sold to num a number of countries. I think they've just done a version in America, they've sold it to Denmark, Holland. Yeah, but, but the funny thing is, they've even sold it to Iraq. Ya Mustafa, Nasibak Waral Bab. Faddal. Allah and Tamal Jood. Very predictable. But speaking of suicide bombers, there was a survey done in America asking people if they could remember the year that 9-11 took place. And get this, 30% of the people polled couldn't recall that it was 2001. Had no idea. Uh, I think that's fair enough. It's not like, I mean, September 11, it's not an important day in the American psyche or anything. It's not the sort of date that would stick in the memory. I, can... I guess not. Only the loss of 3,000 lives and the destruction of buildings in New York and Washington. Quite forgettable, no, really. I remember but it at all. Just how much knowledge does the average American have about 9-11? Well, Charles Firth hit the streets of New York to find out. What year did the 9-11 terrorist attack take place? Uh, 2000. Was it 2002, I think? 2004? <laughs> and I was in New York when it happened. <laughs> I don't even remember. In what month did the 9 11 attacks take place? October. I think. Uh, August, I think. August. Ninth month, so is that October? Can you recall the exact date of the 9 11 attacks? Well, it was September 9th. September 9th. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, what? September 1st, 9-11, yeah, September 1st. September the 1st. Wasn't it 16th, I think? 15th? Wasn't it 16th? 16th of yeah. August. Okay. What religion did the 9-11 terrorists belong to? Was it Hindu, Islam, or atheist? Hindu. Hindu? <laughs> uh, they were, um, they were stupid. That's, that's what religion they were. They were stupid. They were like some stupid Muslims, uh, whoever they were. How many people died in the 9-11 attacks? Oh. Was it 3,000, 30,000, or 3 million? Uh, 30,000? 30, 30,000. I don't want to be wrong. It was a lot. Millions. Millions? Yeah, I guess. Can we put 3 million? Yeah, go ahead. Millions. In which two cities did the 9-11 attacks take place? Uh, Pennsylvania and New York City. New York. And? I, I just believe New York. Ah, in two cities? Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. I thought it was only in New York City, unless something I missed. Yeah? Did I miss something? U.S. bases, hell, why not? You can build them out of baby seals. 
Forget those things I used to say I've sold out in a major way I used to twist and turn on stage No, I uh, recently moved into a new place and I noticed outside in the street there's a pair of shoes hanging up on the telegraph wires just outside my door. That means you're a drug dealer. Well, that's what I heard. Mm. Yeah. Apparently that's the theory, that a pair of shoes hanging over wires denotes a place where you can score drugs. Yeah. And we looked into it a bit more closely and there's this whole secret code. For instance, if you see a pair of football boots on wires, that's where Ben Cousins bought all of his drugs. Right, yeah. If you see something more like these shoes, that's where circus clowns buy their drugs. <laughs> and uh, if you see a pair of Ugg boots on wires, uh, that just means that bogans live in the area. <laughs> but since I got this new place, I've been, uh, I've been umming and ahhing about whether to throw a housewarming party. Because mm -hmm. I liked the idea of having this massive pool party. Oh, that'd be great. It'd be awesome, yeah, but right. only problem is, I don't have a pool, mm. and I didn't really want my place to get completely trashed. And you have no friends, yeah. There is that too. And then I hit on this great idea, because just because I don't own a pool doesn't mean I can't throw a pool party. I mean, there's plenty of really nice posh houses with pools open for inspection every Saturday. <laughs> Why couldn't you just rock up with your mates and have your party there? Excuse me. Different party. <laughs> Oh, hello, is that Dr. Beatty? It's Clive. Listen, I've been through about 50 of those little containers you gave me for my sperm sample. <laughs> yeah, but I keep missing the cup. Well, I can't predict the force of the ejaculate. Well, my mate came over last night to help me out, and it hit him in the eye. I reckon I could fill a bucket. Well, I mean, I, like, I've got a, a few drops that I managed to get in here. It's, it's not the full water or anything. It's like, ooh, sorry, mate. Sorry. Ooh, sorry, can I get my sample? Sorry, I think it's just rolling. Sorry, guys. He's kind, but slightly too loud. Can you turn? Plenty to fix, as always, Craig. And the first thing we fixed is our titles, yeah, which is good. good. But uh, also, looking under the bonnet, there's plenty of other things there. First cab off the rank is Malcolm Turnbull. Mm. Now, Malcolm's big problem is that for all his talents, he can't shake the perception that he's arrogant and superior. Yeah, and obviously that's something we can't fix. So we're focusing on something else, his MP travel allowance. Yeah, that's right. Now, under the rules, every poly's entitled to $175 allowance a day to cover their accommodation costs when they're in Canberra. Now, uh, Malcolm doesn't actually stay at a hotel, though. He stays in an 
apartment owned by his wife and gives the $175 to her. Fair enough. The Turnbulls need every cent they can get. They're only worth $100 million. Yeah, well, it was news to me that Lucy Turnbull was running a hotel in Canberra. So last time I was there, I tried to book myself a room. Oh, who I mean, is this? It's Julian from The Chaser. I'm in Canberra oh, for the hello, night. Julian. Very good so to see nice you. you. It's good. I'm, I'm in Canberra for the night and I yes, need somewhere yes. to stay. I wonder if I could lease this place from your wife. Is that uh, all right? <laughs> No, well, she's, she, you know, my, my wife is very concerned about who I spend the night with. And well, the, yeah. You're the type of fellow that I don't think you'd yeah, want to have in the Well, place, the only problem know. is I've only got like about a hundred bucks and how much is it no, for no, here? No, 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 it's not the money. It's, it's not 175 the money. a night, no, isn't no, it? it's not the money, it's you, you see. Have you, have you seen some of the good quality accommodation you can get around Canberra, Malcolm? Look at that. <laughs> There Budget in, that's less than $175 right, a night. Very good, very Much good. better, very good service. Oh, adult films on demand. Well, that's obviously on more to your taste. Right, OK. Yeah. All right, well, I suppose you can afford it, can't you? But then again, you're not really paying for it. We're paying for it. Oh, look, that's a pathetic thing to say. Oh, come that's on. I, I could sleep under that tree. It doesn't matter where I stay. That the government pays me or the, the same amount, same amount, right? I just think the so landlord's not understand. giving you a good deal. I just reckon well, you should negotiate with that. That's between me and the landlord. Right. Okay. okay. Well, so you're going to anyway. turf me out? Where am no, I going to no, stay? No, no, no. I think you should go. I think clearly the adult films is what you need, and All you right. should go somewhere else. It's the camera budget in. Well, at least one right. of us is looking after the budget then. Okay. <laughs> See ya. Now, the, uh, the next thing to fix is these bloody big newspapers, the so-called broadsheets, and they can be a bloody pain to read. Yeah, well, the good news is that Fairfax is now reducing the size of their broadsheets in line with the cuts to the quality of their broadsheets. Yes, great. Now, thank Christ for that, but if only the Australian newspaper would follow suit. I personally find it impossible to read it on public transport. Company notices in that part. Legal notices. Just... Can you, you hold that bit there. Can you hold that. You're on the other corner. All right, that's good. I think... Now, who can see the uh, crossword? Last year, Aussies raised a million dollars for the Cancer Council by shaving their heads. Well, this Sunday, the Leprosy Council needs your help. It's Lopopper Limb for Leprosy Day. The more you amputate, the more we raise. Snipping off a finger is worth $5. You get $10 for your non-dominant hand. I've lopped off two legs and an arm, and you can too. And if we meet our million dollar target, we promise to amputate one of the Veronica's heads. <laughs> so remember, this Sunday, chop chop and go out on a limb. road test time again and before we get into it we've actually had a number of requests to road test the new ad for Tui's beer. Yes we have well here it is and uh, normally of course we'd be more than happy to test the premise of any ad uh, but in this case we are still trying to work out what the hell the premise is. It's not <laughs> readily apparent. No it's not. In fact uh, the only thing I took away from the ad was that there was someone on television with a more ridiculous haircut than you. <laughs> it's called fashion Chris. Uh, and indeed this week's road test is all about fashion too. <coughs> Fashion flannelette shirt man. Uh, we're talking <laughs> footwear. It's footwear and the wonderful new service they offer at Athletes Foot. Ready for the test drive? Now there is a shoe shop that talks my language. They know that shoppers like me like to try before we buy. Bring on the mud trays in all shops, it I is say. Great customer service, but. Is the rhetoric of the ad reflected in real life? I mean, how would the shop really respond if you started testing their shoes on various different terrains? Huh? Um, can I have ten halves in 
And these ones here? These are pretty good. Um, can I test drive them? What do you mean, test drive? You know, where you get the terrains out and like and all different no, kinds of terrains. No, we, all... don't, we, don't have, we don't have the terrains here, mate. Oh, yeah? No. Oh, it's a good thing I brought a few of my own. <laughs> got some terrains? There we you go. Want to test drive? Yeah. Let's go. There you go. <laughs> Let's try paint. Yeah! Let's try tar. Oh, yeah! Yay! This is great! Oh, these are really good. We got a cool scooter. Well, hang on, I'm just test driving the shoes. Test driving the shoes. These are great. That's the test drive. We'll pay for it. Oh, yeah. What about sand? Oh, yeah. What happens if I go to the beach? What happens if I, what if I step in the dog turd at the beach? What happens if I walk on the beach and there's a paint bomb on a dog turd and there's tar everywhere? What happens What happens when you're at the beach and there's dog shit everywhere and jelly and paint? It makes you so mad you want to stamp in it and stamp and stamp. You guys should have the terrains ready. Most people don't bring their own, you know? You can yeah. try those shoes out here, mate, before yeah. you go. Yeah, right. how it works, doesn't it? What a... I reckon yeah. you ought to get the lady from the ad out. She was much friendly than you. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, I prefer half a size up, but you can have them back. <laughs> was not the service I was expecting at all. And let's chalk that up as another failed road test. And remember, drop us a line on the War Guest Book if there's an ad on TV that you think deserves the road test treatment. And feel free also to check out the podcast of the show. So we'll catch you next week. Until then. Good night. Good night. So the rainforest bush is on making a comeback? Oh, look, absolutely, because I think we're all tired. We're all tired of being reduced to looking like 13-year-old elite. Have you ever oh. plaited yours? Well, no, because it hasn't grown back enough yet, but when it has... Plats? No, I prefer pigtails. <laughs> we can see that. Floral arrangement, yes, yes. Can you? Mm. Oh, dear. <laughs>